Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, November 11th, 2014, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, families of vets killed in Iraq are suing megabanks for financing terrorism via money laundering. Then, master hacker Guccifer tells the New York Times he uncovered a nuclear false flag for Chicago scheduled for 2015, and predictably, the Times could care less. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. More than 80 wounded U.S. combat veterans and their families have filed suit against several of the world's largest banks. They are accusing them of committing acts of international terrorism by helping Iran fund and arm Iraqi terrorists. Now, the suit alleges that the international banks were knowingly part of a conspiracy by Iran to skirt international sanctions. The banks agreed to alter, falsify, or omit information from payment messages that involved Iran or Iranian parties. This is including the banks, and each of these defendants knowingly entered into an agreement with Iran and its agents. Now, the, uh, the court documents say that with the help of the accused banks, Iran has been able to secretly move billions of dollars in U.S. currency through the United States in a manner that was designed to purposefully circumvent monitoring regulators. And this is said to include hundreds of millions of dollars to Hezbollah, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, and other terrorist organizations that are actively engaged in murdering and maiming U.S. servicemen and civilians in Iraq. So obviously some of the hurdles facing the veterans is that they must be able to show that these attacks were not executed by reason of an act of war. Wartime claims are exempted from the Anti-Terrorism Act because the law wasn't intended to give um, soldiers a private right of action in a military conflict. They're basically saying uh, casualties of war happen, but according to this suit, these were not acts of war, but acts of terrorism and U.S. troops were the target. So what do you think? Are the banks complicit in this? We, we've reported many times they've always funded both sides of the war, just like the banks fund both sides of the drug trade. Now, you'll recall that we actually interviewed the HSBC whistleblower Everett Stern last year. Uh, he exposed the fact that the, the banks were using really creative ways to undermine these U.S. sanctions, and they were coming up with really creative ways to do business with these countries that were under U.S. sanctions specifically HSBC, specifically Iran. So we know these two big to jail banks are complicit in this. They've helped aid and abet and fund terrorism. But what about the government's complicity? They send the troops to go and fight these wars under false pretenses. The already dominant British Empire grew even more aggressive. Her troops and bureaucracy spread across the globe. The sun never set on Britannia's holdings. The banking cartel funded, in fact, since about 1800, they have funded both sides of almost every war. And of course, they're getting the interest off of the loans that they've given the various governments and the wars that they have actually helped stimulate and create. By 1900, Germany was a rising force and a leader of the Industrial Revolution. Uh, World War I, for instance, there was absolutely no reason to have World War I, except that it was an ideal opportunity for the banking cartel to make a pile of money by funding both sides of that particular war. On June 28, 1914, the heir to the Austrian-Hungrian throne, Archduke Franz Ferdinand, was assassinated while traveling in a motorcade. The Black Hand, a Serbian secret society with connections to French and British intelligence took credit. World War I had begun. companies financed by Rothschild-controlled banks in Germany, France, England, and Austria bankrolled all the factions. Oh. 
at least 20 million were killed in the war. It was a conflict so terrible, the people vowed to never fight again. They dubbed it the war to end all wars. The question is, why did they want war? Well, first of all, there's money and power. But secondly, they wanted to create the League of Nations. They had this in their plans all along, and as a consequence, once the war was over or about to be over, they began to formulate this idea of a League of Nations so this would never, ever happen again. Hundreds of years of practice made the British experts at hiding their empire behind puppet governments and councils. In the name of stopping all future conflicts, they proposed that countries would join a League of Nations. Their true intention was for the League to serve as a framework for world government. But of course, it's not just the banks, but the corporatocracy that we are living under. And a new study out of Princeton is basically making it official. The U.S. has officially become an oligarchy. This is according to a new study by Princeton University professor. Uh, it's on the influence of very wealthy or economically powerful persons on American political policies. And it makes it clear that for the first time, a genuine American oligarchy has staged a slow coup d'etat over U.S. foreign and domestic policy over the past three decades. And this is since the era of Ronald Reagan. This American oligarchy today is the major force for war and disorder across the planet. Now, the study concludes that multivariate analysis indicates that economic elites and organized groups representing business interests have substantial independent impacts on U.S. government policy, while average citizens have little or no influence. The results provide substantial support for theories of economic elite domination. Uh, goes on to say that we believe that if policymaking is dominated by powerful business organizations and a small number of affluent Americans, then America's claims to being a democratic society are seriously threatened. And they're basing their analysis on volumes of data from 1981 to just 2002, uh, basically showing the role of money on our political system. And of course, which gets worse by the year, there were record reports of record funding into campaigns this year, record spending. And of course, not only does the average citizen have zero influence on politics, but of course, those setting policy are counting on our ignorance. Lack of transparency is a huge political advantage. How in the world can this be HIPAA compliant? Which HIPAA is designed to protect the patient's privacy, and this explicitly says in order to continue, you have to accept this condition that you have no privacy or no reasonable expectation of privacy. Three different people were given access to her account, her address, and her social security number. Well, first off, the bill has 10 years of tax increases, about half a trillion dollars, with 10 years of Medicare cuts, about half a trillion dollars, to pay for six years of spending. We will keep this promise to the American people. If you like your doctor, you will be able to keep your doctor, period. Uh, but for the average person, many of fo uh, folks who don't have health insurance initially, um, you know, they're going to have to make some choices. And they might end up having to switch doctors, in part because they're saving money. The Supreme Court is going to take that case. And the question is, are they going to stick to the way it was written, or are they going to rewrite it? That the interesting thing about the bill, all 2,000 pages of it, it's a gigantic blank check. Their insurance is stronger, better, more secure than it was before. Premiums go up. Employers not going to want to pay those premiums. They're going to put, pass on as much as possible to the employee. Lack of transparency is a huge political advantage. And basically, you know, call it the stupidity of the American voter or whatever. But basically, that was really, really critical to getting the thing to pass. And of course, that is why we must hold them accountable. Now, the threat of a ruling elite taking down America is what prompted top hacker Guccifer to take action. Now, you'll recall that he leaked those self-portraits of George W. Bush that he drew of himself bathing in a bathtub. He also exposed emails showing uh, Colin Powell's ties to Bohemian Grove, um, and he also um, plundered a trove of personal emails of celebrities, military brass, and top politicians. And he did all of this while lacking any real computer skills, according to him. 
Well, he is now serving a seven-year prison sentence, and there he wrote a letter explaining his purpose for hacking. Um, that it includes the terrorist attacks of 9-11, the death of Princess Diana, and alleged plans for a nuclear attack in Chicago in 2015. He wrote, This world is run by a group of conspirators called the Council of Illuminati, very rich people, noble families, bankers, and industrialists from the 19th and 20th century. Now, Guccifer has seen their emails, seen into the personal lives of these ruling elites, seen into their plans, and the New York Times just glosses over this fact. It doesn't mention anything that would actually give a little weight or credibility to his conspiracy theories. Uh, they're just allowing the prosecutor to paint him as a peeping Tom who just wanted to look at naked pictures of celebrities, um, when according to Guccifer, he absolutely could care less about the celebrities that he came across he took action because he was concerned about the threat of a ruling class taking down America. And beyond that, here we have a top hacker who has access to these people's accounts warning of a nuclear threat on the city of Chicago planned for 2015. New York Times doesn't go into that at all. Now, you'll recall last year that we reported on those missing nukes that were missing from Dias Air Force Base. Um, they refused to deny that there was some sort of a secret nuke transfer, although it conveniently coincided with a very cryptic announcement from Senator Lindsey Graham, who said that a nuclear attack may hit South Carolina if we don't go to war with Syria. Hmm, remember when all that was going on? I wonder who he works for. Guccifer, the Romanian hacker who accessed private email accounts of numerous top government and military officials, as well as the Bush family, is quoted in the New York Times as predicting a nuclear attack on Chicago sometime in 2015. Having eluded the FBI and the Secret Service for years, Guccifer, real name Marcel Lazar, infamously hacked George W. Bush's creepy self-portraits while also accessing email accounts belonging to Colin Powell as well as military officers and celebrities. He is now serving a seven-year prison sentence in Romania. Explaining the purpose behind his hacking, which was conducted merely by guessing the security answers to people's email accounts to obtain their passwords, Guccifer's manifesto is, quote, a potpourri of conspiracy theories about the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001, the 1997 death of Princess Diana, and alleged plans for a nuclear attack in Chicago in 2015. And whether you believe it to be the work of a conspiracy or a plot crafted by a group like ISIS, the fact is that Chicago has been a terror target since 9-11. Earlier this summer, the FBI warned that ISIS were planning to target major US cities after the terror group put out a series of chilling tweets identifying the old Republic building in Chicago as being in the crosshairs. Guccifer also makes another intriguing comment during the New York Times interview, quote, This world is run by a group of conspirators called the Council of Illuminati. Very rich people, noble families, bankers and industrialists from the 19th and 20th century. Of course, a far cry from the original 18th century Bavarian Illuminati, the modern incarnation largely centers around claims by hip-hop artists and other members of the entertainment industry, that they're part of an occult secret elite that controls the planet. In name-checking the Illuminati, Guccifer is most likely making the general point that global events are coordinated and managed to some extent by elite banking families just as they have been down the centuries. But what's your view on Guccifer's comments about the Illuminati and a nuclear attack on Chicago in 2015? Let me know in the comments below. Check out the other videos, subscribe to the channel. I'm Paul Joseph Watson reporting for Infowars.com. And others like Edward Snowden and of course WikiLeaks has said it is their duty to stand up for truth and justice. And now a group of over 50 musicians, actors, celebrities, and other public figures have sworn a statement in support of these groups. The statement reads, we stand in support of those